A mother wrote and said, quote, The other day I was listening to my two girls as they were looking at a catalog of college merchandise. And they saw some clothing that was sized XL, excuse me, XXL and triple XL. Daughter number one said, do they let people that fat in college? They were in a hyper giggly mood. And they both thought that was just hysterical. Now, before I read another word that you've written about the incident, it's pretty much a guarantee that she's just being a sly, somewhat socially acceptable bully. It's bullying whether the person's in the room or not. It's bullying whether the person hears it or not. Fat people are easy targets. Holy smokes. Well, I was going to say big targets, but I guess that would be making a joke of it. They're easy targets. People say they do it to themselves. Or how could they just keep eating? Or do they know what they look like? And on and on. You've heard them all. And People tell jokes about them all the time. Of course, the funniest ones are told by fat people. And fat people can tell you that other people make judgmental comments to them all the time. I can scarcely believe some of the ones that I've heard from fat people who've heard them. Even in the grocery store, people will make comments to them. It makes racism look mild. Fatism. Nobody says in a grocery store, for example, shh. Do you see how black he is? But boy, they'll say, do you see how fat that person is? And they'll say it loud enough so that they can hear it. So mom speaks up and she says to her daughter, exactly what are you saying right now about that clothing and about the people who wear it? The daughter said, you, you could see the daughter's brain machine working, smoking, coming up. The more somebody has to think about their answer, the more pre they're preparing to defend themselves and lie to you. I see what you're thinking. Can I explain? The daughter said. Then she immediately went into telling me how I was wrong, the mom, uh, with a tortured explanation of what they were really laughing about that made absolutely no sense. I kept telling her that she was defending herself until finally she could say it. I kept at it until she quit the excuses and she finally said what I meant was, Fat people are ugly, dumb, stupid, and should not be allowed to study at college." End quote. Now the mom said to me, that's pretty much the only thing her comment could have meant, right? Yeah. And look how long it took her to admit that. In addition to being mean and ugly, she finds it nearly impossible to simply admit being wrong. So mom said to the daughter, you're defending yourself because you don't want to see how ugly you're being. You try to come across as sweet and nice and innocent so you can get what you want from people. But that doesn't fit with what you're doing now, which would make one of the two a lie. This is spontaneous, so it's true. Sounds like the rest of it is a show. And mom, you've got it. That's right. We can all manufacture slick and beautiful images of ourselves on Facebook with our mission statements, with our professions of belief, with the photographs that are taken of us. But if you really want to know what someone is like, watch their offhand comments, especially when other people can't hear them, just you or the person next to them and the jokes they tell. She's being very shallow and judgmental and mean. Fat people kill their pain with food. That's all it is. But what does your daughter do? She kills her pain with being right and judgmental and mean. So one uses food and the other's just mean and critical and judgmental. Which of these two people would you rather be around? Tell her that. Ask her that question. She'll see it in a different light, or at least it will give her an opportunity to. So the mom said to the daughter, you're defending yourself because you want to be right. You're addicted to being right. It's become automatic for you. When I point out your unkind behavior, you need to close your lips together and first think, I need to listen. My mom is trying to help me. Beautifully said. Tell her that again 
right when you ask her a question or point something out that she needs to learn. Because you know she's going to start thinking, defending, and correcting you. When you correct her, immediately say to her, because you, you know the look, you, you, you can see she's about to, to fight you. As soon as you correct her, you immediately put up your hand and you say, stop. Don't give me your automatic defense. Let's break the cycle. Think about what you did or what you're doing now that I just commented on and tell the truth about it, which may not be pretty, but you'll be honest. You'll be in integrity. You'll be able to feel loved. You'll be able to learn. Mom said, so I gave her a penalty day on her calendar, adding another day to the time that she can't use her phone or play with her friends or whatever the consequence is. Maybe it should have cost her 10 days because she just keeps defending. This addiction is not going away. The addiction to defending and criticizing and being mean because she just keeps doing it. Maybe I should not have allowed her to speak anything but the truth about the comment. Hence my suggestion that you tell her to stop, stop and think before she says a word. She wanted to explain this and that and how she was right. You can write this down in stone. The more words people use, the more they're defending themselves. I do this with emails. I get, I go through uncounted emails every single day. And if I open up an email and it's three pages long, somebody is accusing somebody else of unfairness, explaining to me how they're right. Um, they're always defending and right because it takes a lot of words to do that. It doesn't take very many words to go, I made a mistake. How could I have done this differently? Pretty sure that's just two sentences, two short ones. Maybe mom says, maybe she can write this event down and refer back to it the next time she doesn't immediately own up to the truth. She just automatically looks at me like I must have it wrong instead of trusting or considering that I'm telling her something true and she needs to look at herself. Yes. So tell her ahead of time, so it's not a surprise, that she can assume that when she responds to an observation you make about her, she's preparing to defend herself. She will. She is. Now, she might look at you like, how do you know I'm always defending myself? Well, how do you know? Because it's an addiction. If, if you have beer in your fridge and it keeps going missing, and you have one alcoholic who's living with you, you don't need to hire a detective to figure out where the beer is going. You already know, because addict's behavior is very predictable. Same with your daughter. Mom says, maybe I should just say rock or human. That comes from a past answer in the parenting training, meaning rock or human? Do you want to be a rock and just react or do you want to be a human being and make a choice? And she needs to say the rest on her own about whether it's choosing or reacting and whether she's being kind or critical. Maybe I should just do that. In this case, it was a considerable effort, mom says. It was a long process to take her on that path from her ugly comment to finally admitting the truth. Shouldn't she really be doing all this on her own by now? Yeah, she really should. Should? Mm, it would be reasonable. You've explained it all many times. She's seen it on the parenting training. She knows what is right. She does. And she's not stupid. Hence my suggesting your first word. Stop. Then she can, you can tell her this. She can just assume that she's about to defend herself or is defending herself in her head. Otherwise, every argument she has with you, every word she speaks is another exercise in her being right. And she doesn't need more practice. You, you don't need to be stopping the alcoholic when they're halfway through the beer in the fridge. No, they need to be stopped from taking beer out of the fridge at all, ever. And then mom says, I think I just fell for it again. I think I got manipulated. So. Maybe I could role play this with you. So my daughter says, do they let people that fat go into college? And I said, what are you saying? Now, help me with what to do next. 
So I'm going to repeat. Say what I said. Stop and assume you're about to defend. Don't defend. Tell the truth. And if she continues being right, keep it simple. Hold up fingers like this. When the daughter says, oh, I, I was just joking. Just go like that. I wasn't being mean. This is you holding up your fingers. We, we didn't understand what we were laughing about. Now, this won't do you any good unless you explain ahead of time before you have conversations like this, like as in go explain to her now, what each finger means. It's another day on her calendar. It's another consequence. It's another day before she gets to have her driver's license. Another day that she does without the keys to her car whatever. So when she starts to defend herself, you just start counting. You, you don't say, this is a really dumb thing for the parents do and, and need not. They say, if you do that again, I will. The kid already knows what they're doing is wrong. So why do you say if they, if you do it again, they're going to do the consequence right then. Why the consequences? To make the ugly behavior expensive enough that she'll consider another choice. That's why they give people increasing penalties for drinking and driving, for example. So they'll stop it. After somebody's been drinking and driving and gotten 50 DUIs, they don't say, now, if you do that again, no, they don't. They put them in jail. And then eventually they'll stop it. Every word she says, is her being right. Every inflection, every tone, it's a self-deception. It's a lie that's hurting her the most. Mom was writing, but thinking out loud, she says, I've done that before, saying that if you don't admit what you're doing immediately, you'll get a consequence. Come to think of it, she stopped immediately. That's right. I let her defend at no cost. I let her do it too much. Each defense should have cost a day, like you suggested. One, two, so I made a mistake. This is mom talking. I let her go insane. I let her drive drunk. And I go drunk with her by not stopping it in its tracks. But just like getting in a car with a child you know is drunk and sitting in the passenger seat and say, drive us home. Makes no sense. Well, children who are trying to be right and defending themselves and being ugly and unloving and anything that detracts from happiness are drunk. And then mom says, it's like a roller coaster of excuses. And I'm riding it with her instead of staying on the ground, observing her and calling her what it, calling it what it is and attaching the weight. That's a great word. The weight of consequences to it. The more consequences you add, the greater the burden they become. That's a nice metaphor in one word. Good for you. In your defense, she's pretty good at this. She's been doing it a really long time. And number two, you want to believe, because you're a sweet, loving mother, you want to believe that she's not being that ugly. But she is. Or being that right. But she is. And you're learning. And I have complete faith that you will get better at doing this with her.